This is Mr. Honey Bear. How you doing? I'm gonna show a couple of techniques actually. Um, first of all, I'm no expert at this, so I've only been doing it for a short time. There's a lot of videos online that I learned from. Um, hold, hold on just a second. Can you guys hear him with the loud noise behind me? Just wanna make sure you can hear him. Go ahead, just talk a little louder when the cars go by. Oh, okay. Sorry, we're on a busy street. I can predict the cars. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna show a couple different techniques that I'm, I've am i been using the last few weeks to do some flags that I've been creating. Which are these right here. This is, this is one of the techniques. Thank you, Miss Becky. Um, and I'll show you these in just a second. I'll show you what, I, what I've been using um, and how I've been doing it. Uh, to get the two techniques. The first technique I'm gonna show is gonna be, it's gonna get a, just a light burn. And you're just gonna get just a real light burn like this. And then the second technique, we're gonna get an even darker and deeper burn. I don't know if you can see this with the ridges. It gives you this, these ridges, these dark ridges underneath here. And that'll be the second technique. That, this one takes a little bit more work, but it's a, I, I really like this technique. Right, Miss Becky? He did an amazing job on that one. And this was his very first one that he did, and he carved out all of these hearts. They are carved. Stars. Those the stars. stars. I'm and... sorry. The stars. <laughs> so I will, show, I will show you how I've done these, and... Hopefully it'll give you some ideas and show you that it's not that difficult to do. Um, a couple of the tools that I've, I'll be using, um, I got, it's a propane torch with three burners. Pick this up from Harbor Freight. Real simple, real cheap tool. Um, it just hooks to a propane tank. Um, hooks to a Coleman propane tank for camping or to a, Col a, a regular torch propane tank. You can use a regular torch burner that you can get at Home Depot or Lowe's as well. I like this because it's got the hose and it's much easier to use. Or if you're doing a large project, you can get the commercial weed burning ones that have big nozzles on them that you can, if you're doing huge fence boards, it's a lot easier to use those, but those are a lot more expensive. Um, this this seems to work really well for the smaller projects. Uh, it comes like I said, it comes with three different nozzles, burning depending on what size you're going to be burning. Um, and then this is for soldering. But it's it this works out really well for this size these size projects. So what I'm going to I'll show you a couple different things. Those those flags that I showed you those those two there were done with just a white wood like a pine. Um, you can use this on all different types of woods. I've done it with cedar and with the pine. I like the, the pine the look of it. The cedar looks good as well. It's, it comes out a little bit darker, um, but it's, it's not bad. It, do, it burns well. Uh, the pine seems to show a little bit better for this type of a project. It's a matter of just playing with the wood and determining what you want to use um, for your project. Hold on. Miss Becky, we're going to have some of these on our website very soon. We're trying to figure out sizes, weight, and shipping. So he's also playing with the type of wood that he's using to try and make them as light as possible so that shipping won't be so much. Okay, go ahead, honey. Okay. Um, one of the things that I do is when I'm when I'm picking my wood, like with the with the white woods, I try and find something that's got a lot of grain in it, because it's going to show the burning technique is going to show this grain. So I look for something that's got a lot of grain, and the knots the knots actually show pretty well. Um, you can see here uh, these scuff marks. These are no big deal because they'll they'll sand out if you want to sand them out. Um, but these not these knots they actually burn real real well. And then this is the cedar here. And this show this will show real well. Um, so I'll, let's get started on the light burn real quick because that's a quick and easy one to show. Um, I'll show with the cedar with the light burn first. One of the things I like to do with the cedar is I like to sand it really quick because um, this I'm using a cedar fence board. 
it's really light um and the fence boards the cedar fence board and it's like four dollars for a six foot fence board so it's really cheap but it, it's a little bit rough so i like to take and sand it really quick doesn't take much this is just uh this is 150 grit sandpaper on the palm sander just run the palm sander All you need really quick. Hey, that, it off. that's our that was our tent <laughs> broom. Yeah, <laughs> Brush it off real quick. Um, when you're doing this burning technique, make sure that you're doing it on a surface that isn't going to catch fire or you're outdoors, so if it does catch fire, you're not gonna catch your garage on fire or your shop on fire. I've got the hose over here on the side, just in case. Over there. <laughs> um, safety first, you always wanna be safe. Um, try and sweep away as much of the sawdust that'll catch fire as possible. This stuff, it'll burn real, real quick, so you don't wanna have big piles of sawdust laying around. Uh, just real basic, I, real basic safety. I don't wanna lecture everybody on safety because I think we all know about safety. Um, safety goggles, you want to have your safety goggles. A lot of people will wear gloves. Um, I'll wear gloves on the other technique because the wood will still be a little warm when I'm handling it, but on this one I'm not going to wear my gloves. Uh, I have an issue putting gloves on because of a, a funky finger. So all you, all you do on this, you just have to light the torch, real simple. It should be simple. We need a long lighter. Yeah, we need a better lighter. Mine's dying. There we go. And all you want to do is just run the torch, keep it about six inches above the wood, and you just run it over evenly. And you can keep it lit. It's a little windy here. Go grab another lighter. <laughs> this was a good lighter. That's what I've been using. Maybe it's empty. Oh, we're gonna get windier later. That's why we chose to do this now. Just nice and even over the top of the wood. And you'll see the burn pattern. And you just Burn into the pattern that you want on this on this one. You don't have to burn heavy. You just burn it. Just a little, this is just a light technique. And on the cedar, and you can see how it just burns nice. And it just brings out it brings out the grain of the wood. And you can see that grain just coming out. And you can see you can see where the knots come out. Sometimes you'll get a little bit of sap coming out of those knots, and that's fine. That's not a big deal. And then on the, on the white wood, you just do the same thing. You just even strokes over it, go back and forth until it's burned just to the just to what you want. It smells like a campfire. It's just real simple on the, on this technique. So it's just a light burn. And then you just take your paint or your stain, whichever you want to use. On this one here, this is paint. It's rethunk junk paint. This is in rethunk junk by Laura. Barn door. No, this, barn is, not, this is not the barn door. This ruby is red. Ruby red, and it's watered down. I watered this down about 50 50. I just use a, a foam brush on here. You just paint you paint on top of this and it looks like it's going on pretty thick 
but you let it sit and you'll see that it starts coming out and coming through. And I'll set this one aside and I'll bring in the blue that I use. This is navy blue Minwax stain. It's a water-based stain and it's also watered down about 50-50. Watering it down gives it more of a translucent look. Minwax has a translucent stain, but it's difficult to find anywhere around here. I can order it, but I order when I can just mix my own. I just brush it on, just like, just like the paint. You just brush it on and just let it sit. And then once it's once it dries, you can go back and determine if you want to brush on another coat because it'll soak in. This one is already pretty soaked. Yeah, you can see it soaking in, and you can see how that burn is coming through already. And then another, and then afterwards, once once it's done. It's done drying and the burn has gone through. We'll go back and we'll, we'll look at it a little bit later. You can actually go back over it again and burn it a little bit more on top of your stain or your paint if you want to add a little bit more burn to it. So if, it, if, it needs a, if you think it needs a little bit more burn, then you can do it. So I'm going to show you now. The one that takes a little bit more time and a little bit more energy. Hi, Miss Amber. I see you on Old Made New. Hold on, where's the comments? Hold on. If you get more burn than you want, can you sand back? You can sand you can sand it back. Um I'm doing the light burn. You usually don't get if you keep if you just keep the torch away from it. Uh, keep it about six inches away. You don't get too much burn. You can. It's easy to control the amount of burn on that technique. Just keep the torch away from it. Adjust, adjust your distance with the torch. You can sand it back if you want. Um, and you can always go back if you want. You can always sand it down and start over. Sorry. And her hose is not that long. Is that a bad thing? No, no. You can do it. I started out doing this technique. It didn't even. I didn't even have a hose on my torch. The torch. It was just right off the right off the bottle. Um, it it makes it a little bit more difficult, but you can do it with any size hose. Okay. So this technique. This is more of. What, I believe they call it the Shoshugi. Shoshugi? My Japanese is not good. I believe it's called the Shoshugi burn. And what this does, this technique is actually was actually done in Japan to... They were doing it so that things... You were... I can't think of the word now. Um, you were making your wood... On your buildings so that they wouldn't burn you were making it flammable non-flammable does that make sense yes so that so that your your buildings would not burn in a fire so you were getting a deep burn so that your built your buildings would not actually burn in a fire and you'll see what I, you'll see what I'm talking about as I do this A good lighter is important. Yes. <laughs> the little blick bick isn't flicking. Flick my bick. Well, the wind. Oh yeah. There we go. Maybe. So in this technique, what we're doing, we are actually burning the wood deep. We want to burn, we actually want the wood, the surface of the wood where we're burning to catch fire. And we want it to burn down 
and charcoal. And your torch will sometimes do that when it is burning. And I'll have her get close to the camera in a second. I just don't want her to get burned. Thanks, honey. But I'd hate to have to replace the phone. <laughs> You're terrible. But what your goal is here, when you're running the torch over it, as you can, I don't know if you can see it right now with the phone, you can see the wood where it's, it's cracking and it's gonna start getting really shiny on the surface. But as you're running the torch over it, it's really bright underneath. The wood itself is bright underneath, but it's actually not catching fire anymore. Oh, that's hot. See how I run the torch over it and you can see the red spot underneath it? But the wood really isn't catching fire. Only a couple small spots are catching fire. That's because what you've done is you've, you've fireproof that surface. You've burned it to a point where it won't burn anymore. And you get a real good shine. You can see where it's really shiny. The wood, it's cracking, almost like when you've been in the bathtub way too long, you get real wrinkly <laughs> and cracky. Miss Gladdy, <laughs> right? He's burning everything now. Well, that's what, that's what you want. You want that shiny, and you want, the, you want that shiny, and that you want it to just really crackle, but you want it where it's not gonna catch on fire anymore in those locations across the surface, because you, fire, you fireproof that wood, and that's what the goal of this burning technique is is to fireproof that surface and that's what the the japanese did with their buildings is they caught the outside on fire to fireproof it so if they had a fire in the cities the wood actually wouldn't burn on their buildings and this is where i do need the gloves because the wood is still hot get that stupid it's a little crooked little, finger in there little finger <laughs> And there's a couple of different tools that you can use on this. Wire brushes work really well. Uh, scrub brush works really, really well. Or these nylon wheels in a drill. They come in three different colors. They're like a wire wheel, but they're nylon. They come in three different colors. They come in an orange, which is an 80 grit, and then the gray and the blue. One of them is 100 grit, one is, a, I believe, either 200 or 150. I'm not sure which, but they can work well. The only problem with that is you gotta be careful because they will leave some pretty good scratch marks on the wood. But what you do is you take your brush. We'll start with, I'll start with the wire brush on this one. Careful behind you. What? Your dog. Oh, I know, I'm used to it. <laughs> And you go with the grain of the wood. And you just brush down along the grain of the wood. You clean out all that extra soot that's in there. And if you use a real, real rough wire brush, this one here is really, really, really rough. You can leave some, you can leave some pretty good gouges in the wood. This one's a lot softer. And you just brush, brush away all this soot. And you can see as you do this. It's so pretty. You can see that grain of that wood coming out. And even that knot. And the further down you, you go, the more change in color you can get.
Let me just kind of brush away some of this. And then I'll show you. Oops. Tilt this a little bit at an angle. You don't want to go too fast with the drill. If you can lighten that in inside there, lighten that wood a little bit more down underneath. Without taking too much of that top off. You just kind of wipe it down. Now when you take your stain or your paint, gets down inside the grain of the wood. And this, and this one, this one can be as hard as you want or as easy as you want because you can stop at this point. Or if you'd like, once this is all dry and you get it to the dark, the darkness, the color you want within here, you can go back over this with some sandpaper, some just lightly sand over the top of this and bring this color, this black out again. And what you can wind up with, you wind up with this, the black like this. Hey Chrissy. Now you can also burn this again a little bit real light and it'll bring some of this out. And and if you play, you can play with this because this one here, I did on th this side here, I didn't burn it as heavy. I burned it a little bit lighter. So I didn't go down as deep. I didn't burn it until it was really, it was shining. Um, and then I brushed it off. So I didn't burn it as deep. So when you play, you can play with it to get the coloring that you want. But this, and you can see here why I like this. I think that this is my favorite, but it's a lot of work because again, when you're done with it, once you're done here, once this is dry, you can go back over this and make, you can go over this. And it starts to bring some of that dark wood back out. Right, Tammy, he's doing a great job. So this heavy dark technique is the first flag right here, right? Yes, it's that, it's that first that one That flag. Right there. And so he does each individual strip and then attaches them together, right? Yes, those are all each one's. Each strip is done separately and then he attaches them. The light, the first version he did was the first flag we saw, which was not as deep of a burn. And then you can go back over these and you can reburn these if it doesn't burn enough. You can reburn these, and I can show that on the on the cedar here. You can see the burn doesn't show through much on the cedar. So this is dry now. I don't think you get the same effect if it's still wet, but it's dry. 
No, if it's still, I haven't, if it's still wet, the paint bubbles. So you don't want to do it when it's still wet. You can still go back over it. You can see where you get a little bit of burn still. It's you can get some burn in there. But you just make sure make sure the paint's dry, otherwise it will bubble. Is this one cedar? This is the cedar. And then what is this one? This is a white wood. This is a pine. And you can go back over this one as well. You can add some more burn to this one if you don't like it. But make sure you get the color to where you want it first. To me, this one, I'd have, I would have gone a little bit darker. I'd have gone at least one more coat of red on there. And then, then there's the heavy burn. And, the heavy, and then the heavy burn with the scrubbing. And you can still sand, you can take some sandpaper. I don't think I have a sanding block out here. Um, but if you hit, if you just hit this with a, hang on a second, I'll grab a sanding block. No, this, this one is cedar. This one is pine, white, uh, pine white, white wood. White wood. Yeah. This was a fence board, wasn't it? No. Or what that one was. This is a fence board. That was a fence board and then he did sand it smooth. And then if you just hit this with, just hit it with a sanding block. It's real light. It'll start to bring the it'll start to bring that burn back out so it's a little bit darker. But you don't want to go too far because then you'll start you'll get down and start sanding the, the burn off. So you get that. But you just get it to where you get it to where you like it. And that that's the technique. So the first flag again. Yeah, pumpkin was behind him. So this is the heavy burn flag. This is the heavy burn. And, and he got, also carved these out, the stars. It's got a coat of uh, lacquer on the lacquer on it. That's why it's got some yellow. And this has also got the white. This has got white stain on it. This the white stripes have got white stain, and that's why it's. it's so got, that's why the lacquer. The lacquer turned, turned yellow. It, yeah. And that was it. his first one, so we're keeping that one. Yeah, we're gonna keep that one. That's the light, the light burn with no white stain on it and no lacquer yet. It'll be lacquered today. I'll finish that lacquering today. And then let me show you. There's the pumpkin always behind him. It's always out front with him. Oh, where's the crosses? Are they? Uh, oh, crosses are in the booth. Oh, that's right, I forgot. You can post the pictures of them. That's the cedar. Right, he did a great job. And this one will have, this one won't have stars. This will have. This one's gonna have shotgun shells. shotgun shells. The brass part of it. We had a customer, this is hers, right? No. Oh, so we had a customer request one, which is what started this all. Hers is. Hers is on the table in there. And hers is going to have resin on it. So we're going to try that also. So that's going to be fun. But this is the light burn. This is the light burn on cedar. So. That is the technique. Please, if you have any questions, post them. And if you like the how-tos that Honey Bear does, give me lots of hearts because I he loves to, he's a wealth of knowledge. So we have another one that he did with changing hardware on furniture. So now his expertise out here. And uh, we appreciate you coming in and joining us on this Sunday. Please post your comments here and he will answer them for you. If you have any questions and I'll make sure he sees all of your comments. So give him lots of love. Thank you guys. Bye.